to claim that the future of the Democrat Party is bleak is an understatement. For almost a year since Joe Biden occupied the White House, the Democrats have stumbled through one self-created catastrophe after another, screwing up every single thing they touch. Inflation is at a 39-year high, while the supply chain crisis has caused a shortage of essential commodities. The influx of illegal aliens is a burden and safety risk for citizens. The bat stew cases continue to surge and Biden has almost given up. The Supreme Court blocked Biden's vaccine or test mandate for large employees. Senator Kirsten Sinema rejected Biden's plea to abandon the Senate's filibuster rule that would have enabled Democrats to pass a voting rights bill, ending all hope for the bill. Consequently, Biden's and Kamala Harris's respective approval ratings are at an all-time low. Even their propaganda wing, or the news media, is finding it hard to disguise these disasters. It's safe to say that if the elections are conducted fairly, a Democrat route in November during the midterm elections is certain. But instead of initiating some remedial actions to mitigate an impending disaster, the Democrats continue with their sinister course. They misuse the various government agencies to persecute their political opponents and brand them as domestic terrorists. The blatantly partisan committee to investigate the insurrection of January 6th exists to prevent President Trump from running for president again in 2024. From the record inflation to the persecution of political opponents, Biden and the Democrats are providing Americans with a glimpse of life in a third world totalitarian country. Now, the Democrats know that their two foremost adversaries beyond conservative groups and the GOP are President Donald Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. They have attempted to destroy them in the past, but have failed spectacularly. Now, it appears that a new ploy has been hatched to instigate a squabble between the two gents. We'll go over more of the details right after this quick commercial break to pay some bills. Do you have a personal butcher? I certainly don't. Well... Until now, I introduce to you The Personal Butcher. They offer you the highest quality meats by partnering with best-in-class farms located in the United States. Okay, so here's how it works. They'll send you a custom box every four weeks and you can pause or cancel at any time or just change the frequency of deliveries. The Personal Butcher believes that quality meat shouldn't be a hassle to get your hands on. They want every home in America to have access to the best quality and with the same convenience as getting the mail from your mailbox. So let's talk quality. They offer the best quality products raised here in the United States. Grass-fed beef, free-range chicken, anabolic free pork. Their meat is 100% raised, processed, packed, and shipped in the United States. It's processed from family farms in Idaho, Montana, and Iowa. It's then packaged and shipped out of their Chicago land area distribution center. So if you're interested in feeding yourself and your family from a high-quality source you can trust, while at the same time supporting this channel, give The Personal Butcher a try by hitting that link in the description box. Okay, so in a recent interview with One American News, Trump said he had received his booster dose and said, quote, I watched a couple politicians be interviewed, and one of the questions was, did you get a booster? Because they had a vaccine, and they're answering like, in other words, the answer is yes, but they don't want to say it because they're gutless, unquote. The Democrat media characterized this as a veiled attack on Ron DeSantis. The Democrat media then claimed that President Trump called DeSantis an ingrate with a dull personality, with no realistic chance of beating him in a potential 2024 showdown. Now, obviously, these claims are based on sources and are said to be made in private. So, as President Trump said back in 2018, when you see anonymous sources, stop reading the story. It is fiction. During a recent podcast interview, DeSantis said he regretted not speaking out forcefully against the federal bat stew lockdowns earlier on during the pandemic in 2020, since he didn't understand how extensive the measures would become. DeSantis took aim at Dr. Anthony Fauci, accusing Fauci of relying on data from China it was not trustworthy as federal lockdown orders took the country by storm. Of course, the Democrat media characterized this as a subtle jab at President Trump. Oh, and let's not forget that DeSantis said last October that he doesn't plan on running for president in 2024, 
but when have the Democrats allowed facts to interrupt their propaganda narrative? Hence, Democrat news outlets such as the New York Times and the Daily Beast are gleefully declaring a battle royale between the president and the governor for the GOP nomination. They joyfully watched President Trump take down his GOP rivals such as Jeb Bush, Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, etc. during the primary in 2015. You see, they know that they can't hurt DeSantis, really, who has done an awesome job for his state despite the pandemic. They are hoping that President Trump will do it for them in 2023. A Republican taking on another Republican that ends up hurting them both and divides the vote during the main contest is the stuff that Democrat dreams are made of. It is a petty but sly sort of ploy by the Democrats and one hopes both men will not fall for it in any way. Now, should both men issue statements ridiculing these stories and even make a joint appearance? While it isn't necessary to react to every figment of the Democrat machine's imagination, in this case, an emphatic refusal would be ideal. At this juncture, even the appearance of a rift, even if it is fictional, is bad for the GOP. Although not loud enough, DeSantis has already dismissed these rumors. Lastly, the GOP desperately needs President Trump. Governor DeSantis, Governor Glenn Youngkin of Virginia, and all free-thinking Republicans in Washington and beyond to work as a team to take on the Washington Democrat establishment. Hopefully everybody within the GOP remembers that to emerge victorious in this battle, they have to be united. If you were to run for the presidency in 2024, would you consider Ron DeSantis, Governor of Florida, as your running mate? Sure, I would. But, you know, there are numerous people that are great. I would certainly consider Ron. I was I was at the beginning of Ron. I was the first one to endorse him when he came out as a congressman that a lot of people didn't know. And my endorsement helped him tremendously. And I know him very well. He's a great guy. We have other great people. I mean, you look at some of the people that Republican people that have done a great job with states and you don't see that with the Democrats. I mean, they kept their states closed and locked down. And the schools are closed. It's just absolutely outrageous how they get away with it. So you are considering running in 2024. How about 2022 for the House or Senate? Has that uh, crossed your mind at well, all? Well, so many people are saying that I should run in 22. And uh, I think that's highly unlikely. But they, they do say that a lot. You've heard that. Most of this came by way of The American Thinker. If you liked it, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. There's a PayPal link in the description box, so please put a dollar in the bucket on the way out the door. I'd like to thank everyone for all your donations. Much needed and much appreciated. Now, with all that being said, we'll see you next time. Come on, move. Move. Easy, easy.